I'm with uh, Andre from Acoustatech, who's a colleague and also an active member in the NFCA. And uh, we've got a few questions lined up for him uh, in relations to acoustics and buildings. What's the first thing that comes to mind when the subject of flooring and acoustics comes up as an underlayment manufacturer? Uh, first thing that comes to mind, Frederick, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> we're in for a treat. Uh, it, it's most likely going to be a little complex. Um, you know, dealing with flooring and acoustics over the past few years, there's no doubt there's some, uh, uh, there's no, there's no doubt that there's some, some gates to cross, there's questions to ask, there's a lot of people involved, so it's not going to be as straightforward as we would uh, want it to be. That's probably the first thing that comes to mind. All right, and how would you qualify the level of knowledge uh, in your field of acoustics and underlayments in the flooring industry in general? Most people, if not all people, uh, are aware that there's uh, uh, a lot of misguiding information, there's a lot of misleading information, there's a lot of, you know, to some extent, the, the knowledge that something is, is wrong or that, uh, you know, the way the numbers are portrayed and whatnot is not the right way to do it. That said, uh, the level of knowledge of how to handle it and how to assess it and how to fix that and uh, what the solutions are and what the assemblies and what the context are about uh, and what the structures are capable of and, and each of the technology and material, I would say there's certainly room for the improvement. Uh, so yeah, so most people uh, are, are aware that something's off with the numbers but that doesn't mean they necessarily know how acoustic actually works and how the principles apply and such. And just, um, but these people, they're aware of the importance of acoustics and uh, flooring, right? Yeah, I would, I would say that some of them are for sure. Uh, I mean, the questions, you know, comes up more and more people are, are demanding more and more comfort. Uh, you know, the requirements are there. That said, that doesn't mean that everyone pays attention to it the same way. That doesn't mean that uh, people are not still cutting corners to some extent, uh, you know, to sell a product and move on. So I, I would say there's an awareness out there, there that acoustic, especially over the past couple of years, for obvious reasons. Uh, but there, once again, there, there's certainly room for, for, for improvement when it comes to uh, what people are actually expecting and even though the consumers may not ask the questions, uh, they may not say loud and clear that they have concerns with it. Uh, it's on top of mind, there's no doubt about it. And um, there's a lot of terms and numbers out there. So what do you make of them and what use do they have in, in this market? Yeah, that's that's usually where a lot of the confusion comes from, uh, Frederick. So there's obviously a lot of terms that we'll, we'll hear about the IICs and uh, the AIICs and the field testing and the lab testing and then, you know, the delta of this world and whatnot. So there's no doubt that there's a lot of technicalities and there's certainly a lot of terms, uh, a lot of science that comes behind this field, which creates, of course, confusion if you don't have the knowledge to, to handle it. Um, there's certainly a battle. It's everyone in the flooring industry is aware that there's a little bit of a battle for numbers. So it's extremely difficult to navigate, especially if you're not familiar with the flooring industry. You don't know what a, a 72 or, or, or an 84 means uh, by, by any stretch or people associate those numbers to performance, but that's not how that actually works. So unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, mis misleading information, misguiding information. There's a lot of of confusion when it comes to the terms and the numbers and what they mean and what am I actually getting. And, and the irony of that, Frederick, is that when you're a condo owner or you rent a unit, all you care about really is that, you know, first of all, legally, uh, what you're doing is gonna be proper with your bylaws. And, and second is, is most people are going to agree that they're looking for comfort. So what you're truly trying to do is comfort for yourself and the people around you, especially when you live in co-property. So it's unfortunate that there's still that much, uh, you know, confusion when it comes to the terms and numbers. Uh, but uh, again, I think we're somewhat on the right track um, to, 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 to solve that. Is there something that you could explain to people real quick that's a good indicator of what to look for when you're looking at all these numbers to kind of as a quick guidance, uh, whether it's a question you should ask to the person that you're dealing with or something you can look, look out for on product? Yeah, I, I would say that the, the straight answer to that, the, you know, the, the quickest answer to that, Frederick, is that 
uh, a number. So most often, somebody, someone shopping for a floor and, and then requirement of an underlay, uh, we need to understand that most often than not, uh, a number will be required uh, to be associated with that underlayment. The challenge with that is, uh, first, people need to be aware that a number can never be associated with a product. So, a, 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 for example, an IIC of 72 or an IIC rating is achieved on an assembly. It's not achieved on a product. So ultimately, uh, that's in the middle of a lot of issues right now because we keep increasing that number. So I would say uh, to enlighten a little bit of pe people when they're doing their research is you cannot associate a rating to a product. And the number one question would be, uh, you know, understanding what building structure, so what kind of building are you living in? So once you understand that, whether it's concrete or wood frame or whatever it may be, well then ultimately ask the question to your floor contractor is, you know, the data, uh, where does it come from? How was that underlayment tested and on what application, with what floor, with what, you know, on what structure? I think that will ex expedite the process of making sure that manufacturers, flooring contractors, uh, and such are all on the same page of trying to actually use the right thing at the right place. Uh, and at the end of the day, what it's going to do is benefit the concept of uh, comfort for, for anybody living in co-property. So with that being said, like I'm a, from what I understand, there seems to be a danger for builders, consumer, uh, and people putting bylaws uh, for condos in regards to those, uh, to the numbers that are out on the market, correct? Absolutely. Uh, dangers all are related to the same kind of concept. Is first of all, we need to be aware of that expectations is higher than ever. So, uh, you know, whether it's a builder, whether it's an architect, it's it, despite what the, the building code will require, uh, condo boards, we need to be, or, or stratas, we need to be aware of where we want to be within the comfort of a particular building. The dangers behind that is there's a lot of things being thrown out there that are not in link or they're not in sync with what the expectations are. So again, uh, you know, the, the battle for the number, the highest uh, to some extent related to being the better, that doesn't, it's not always true. As a matter of fact, it's, it's very often not true. So it creates a lot of issues because ultimately one consumer may buy a unit a condo as an example and what performance or what comfort they'll actually going to uh, benefit from is nowhere near what they were they were sold on and nowhere near what they expected. So I think that there's no doubt that we all need to come together and figure out really where people want to be, have the conversations up front and the process of finding the right systems and the right flooring with the right acoustic treatment uh, need to be done with, with the data, with the right data, with the right set of information. So that's where the danger comes from because it's too often, too often it leads to uh, complaints and even worse lawsuits. And, and these are skyrocketing over the past couple of years. Uh, people are not happy with what you know, they're hearing from their neighbors and it's directly linked to the design. It's directly linked to, you know, sometimes condo boards and stratas will not necessarily know, you know, what to put in the bylaw. They think they're doing the right thing, but no one's really educating them or taking the time to sit down with them to explain what their structure is capable of and what, you know, doing one thing will, imp how it's going to impact the overall uh, comfort uh, of people living in that building. So there's certainly hope, uh, Frederick, but uh, we have a long road ahead to actually really uh, educate, explain, uh, and assess the situation and basically get these parameters in order. Right. And I'm hearing a lot about uh, setting expectations and really getting a good understanding of how a building is going to perform and what you can actually expect from a product. Yes. So how do you help your customers to set those expectations and guide them through this process and sea of numbers. Ultimately, Frederick, it's all about asking questions. Um, you know, what is a, a particular uh, owner looking for? What is a particular strata looking for? 
you know, how much are the units going for? Uh, what kind of comfort do they want to provide? And then what structure is the building made of? So all these questions out of the gate allow us to guide and consult with people to uh, figure out the best course of action. So in no way, shape or form do we dictate what you should be doing. All, all that we're trying to do as an organization is to understand the situation someone's in and figure out what, what the solutions and what the options are. And once these expectations and these questions are answered and, and we basically know a little bit what we're dealing with, well, ultimately it's a matter of putting options in front of people that can choose for themselves. So it's all about the guidance. It's all about, um, you know, using proper data. It's all about using the science. Uh, you know, it, it's th that it's all related to that versus playing on the fact that most of these people will not have a clue how it actually works and they'll bank on the fact they won't ask the questions. So personally and corporately, we completely disagree with that process. And it allowed us to, to you know, to work with countless, uh, you know, people, including Stratas and, and, and owners even to, 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 to achieve the actual comfort that people are actually looking for over the past few years. So that for, for me, that's it in terms of question. Do you have a, a statement that you'd want to add to conclude to this or anything? Um, I would say first, I appreciate the opportunity, of course. Um, I, I would say, Frederick, that um, my biggest wish in this field is that 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 acoustics becomes one of those uh, one of those parameters that people are not only looking for because they are looking for it, but they actually get uh, too often. And it's sad because too often I hear stories of people in condos or apartment buildings or even hotels that are disappointed with the level of noise they hear. Uh, so I, I would say I'm, I'm hoping that the industry will come together uh, to you know, shed light on how this actually works and ultimately benefit those people that actually buy units and rent units and, and, and you know, go to places where ultimately uh, you're bound to deal with people that you don't know. So I would say we love the cause of, of acoustics. It's not an easy road, uh, but there's certainly hope and we, we're lucky enough to partner up with a lot of great people, including the NFC is a good example, uh, to, to cut through right, the, right through the truth to basically make sure that ultimately people are ending up in a place and living in an environment that they're comfortable and happy in.